So the other day, I uh, posted a video talking about um, the coronavirus uh, 19 and um, why there's such a, um, a, a almost hysteria and terror about the numbers and why these a, a lot of these crazy uh, restrictions are being put on people. Uh, this is a graph, and then if you've been following the news and some of the briefings from the CDC and others, this tries to graph the math about the impact of the coronavirus. But there's a truth that is not being told to the people, and I'm going to go over that uh, in a minute without trying to be apocalyptic. So on this scale is the number of months, and this is the number of cases. Now, one of the things that I will reinforce is that the, the coronavirus 19 is a virus. It is a predator. It is a respiratory predator. Uh, and like all viruses, there is no cure for it. There's no vaccine for it. And the virus is going to do what a virus does. It's going to burn through the food chain, which is us, until it exhausts itself. Now, if nothing was done, if people just got sick, varying degrees of sick, you would have a curve that looks like this. The virus would find its prey. It would just start making people sick to varying degrees and then burn itself out. And that would take, anyway, two, three months and it would be done. And the only thing, remember, there's no cure for it. So the only thing that would happen to these people, the number of cases, is that they would be either have no symptoms, have mild symptoms, just get pretty sick and get better, or they would get pretty sick and they would die. The problem is this dotted line represents the United States health care capacity. And as I said in my previous video, there is not enough capacity, whether it's beds, doctors, nurses, EMTs, ambulances, whatever, ventilators, to deal with the number of people who would need to have that here. The result would be thousands of people dying. Thousands. Um, what happens when people see their loved ones dying and their government unable to help, what happens? You have civil unrest. There have been a couple of movies where a father takes a gun and goes into a hospital and holds a staff of physicians hostage until they deal with his son. Uh, there would be that on steroids. The Americans are emotionally weak that way. We can't deal with the concept that our loved ones are going to die and nobody can help them. We can't, we can't deal with that. So you would have people trying to take matters into their own hands to try to get help for their, for their people. So if you think the toilet paper issue was fun, imagine what happens when bodies are falling and there's nothing that anyone can do because we're at capacity, right? So you've heard the term flatten the curve. So what can you do to avoid the spike? Well, you do all kinds of things, right? Stay at home, uh, shelter in place. Don't be around crowds more than 25 people. The list goes on. The list goes on. But the truth is the same number of cases will take place. It will just happen over a longer period of time. Longer period of time. Six, nine, maybe 12 months, right? The difference, though, is that those number of cases, because they're spread out, don't exceed the healthcare capacity to deal with the very sick. And so the number of deaths uh, is reduced. There will be deaths, but the number of deaths don't come anywhere near this. And so what that does 
is, is it manages, it tamps down that pressure for civil unrest. Because it gives people hope. It lets people understand that uh, something is being done. And we don't have, you know, truckloads of body bags showing up on in, in neighborhoods to deal with the dead. But keep in mind, the number of cases will remain the same. The number of cases that are severe will remain the same. The number of deaths may or may not go down, but there will certainly be less than the number of deaths up here when the healthcare system can't even deal with it. So I say all that to say that uh, there, is, there is rationale for what's going on, uh, and we may agree or disagree. In my personal opinion, uh, I hear the term, the greater good, the greater good. I will tell you that creating a trillion dollar buyout and a check to every person, while it might feel good when you get the money, is not the greater good. It's not. Do you collapse the nation's economy because there might be 100, 200, 300, 300,000 people dead? No. The greater good is to protect the 350 million and the jobs and the businesses and all that and not collapse the economy. And you deal with it as you deal with it. And yes, people are gonna die, right? And it might be your family, they might be me personally, who knows? But you don't collapse the country in response. But I'm not king of the world. What's really going on and what's important to understand is managing civil unrest that would occur if that number of people started dying and there was nothing or perceived that nothing could be done. So I put that out there. I have some other thoughts, but I'll just leave it at that for right now. Um, if you have any thoughts, comments, please put them down below. If you like the content, please subscribe. And if you don't like the content, you can unsubscribe. I won't be butthurt. So as always, thanks for watching. Carry on.